Howdy, howdy. What you working on? Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm wrapping up the script for God's Not Dead 8. Eight. Wow. We're, uh, we're still making those movies? Yeah. Yeah, we are. <sighs> What's it about now? Oh, yeah. Um, they're, uh, they're trying to send a, a Christian guy to Mars. Yeah. We're hoping they're roping enough budget to, you know, actually launch a, a real rocket. It's insane. Okay. Well, I got that uh, other story written for our platform that you wanted. Nice. What's it about? Okay, so it's about a guy trying to navigate life in the music industry while trying to stay true to his faith. You know, he started out, you know, the same as other musicians do. Small gigs, street corners, you know the works. But he finally breaks a record deal where he gets a label that's going to debut his first album. Sweet. Well, he gets plunged into the industry, and as the story goes further in, we realize just how much glory and fame is taking away from him and ultimately leading him away from God. And uh, we get a glimpse into, you know, some of his peers um, that he works with in the industry. And like, they were just like him when they had their big break. Some of them are very unsure about their faith and some have completely walked away from their faith altogether. And, you know, all these observations, they really convict our main character. Uh-huh. His mentor in the story ends up being a huge driver of reminding him who he truly is. And I think this script has, like, the best uses of subtext I've ever worked with. I, it's really good. I, I'd love to go over the plan with you. Wow, that, that's great. That's awesome. It, it's such a neat take, too. I, who's the antagonist? Great question. Up to, like, near the climax of the movie, like, we're focused on a rivalry he has between himself and another musician. But in actuality, it's that musician's label that's out to ruin him. I, it's a great plot twist. I, you'll know when you see it. Okay. Okay. In the end, he finally realizes just how much he's turned away. He ends up quitting the industry, actually, and you know he loses a lot of friends, a lot of money, a lot of luxuries he had being in the industry, but in the end, he doesn't regret giving it all up just to get his heart right with God again. Man, I love it. I love the detail. I know, right? I love how God just shows up like that and just, you know, out of nowhere when we're least expecting it, just boop, idea. <laughs> that being said, there are some changes we need to make here. Okay. First off, I want you to make the mentor a, a pastor. Um... Why? Because! It, it's a nice way to do it. It's like it's lined up for it, you know? It's actually not. I mean, he was someone who actually went through the industry and, you know, found out how horrible it was. So that's why he's the mentor. And just, he sheds a lot of wisdom on our main character. Well, uh, make him a pastor now. Maybe he did it after he left the industry. Well, maybe, but it, that's an idea that's just been done too much. But, uh, we'll talk about it, don't worry. Make the reason why he leaves be because he has cancer. Okay, um, <clears throat> that might work. Cancer could be one of those things that happens to him. I mean, biblically, you know, God uses all evil things for our good. God uses it as a way for him to realize that he needs to come back to him and cure the cancer at the end. What? How? God cures it, duh. Don't you think that's a little cliche? What do you mean? There's plenty of stories where that's happened before. Yeah, true stories. This isn't a biopic, though. Cancer being cured, it just comes out of nowhere. Next, I want you to take all the non-Christian people, make them all treat the main character terribly throughout the film. What? Why? It will really space out the dynamic range of our characters throughout the movie. By making them all jerks. Just because you don't believe in Jesus, it doesn't make you a jerk. We all have a sense of morality, whether we realize it or not. We only take real notice when we accept him as Lord and Savior. Just do it, okay? Just have a scene where, you know, someone's throwing a Bible across the room and yelling about how God never loved them. It's easy. Yeah, because that's realistic. Have about 50% of the movie filmed in church. Okay, not every one of our movies has to have a church scene. I strongly disagree. Plus, it really saves on budget, too. You know, just having everything in one place. Less company moves, you know. Plus, I, I mean, how many churches say no to having a movie shot in their building? I mean, come on. I think we're getting off topic. Just a little bit. Also, um, this could be anyone in the film, or it could be the main character's kid for all we know. Have someone win a football game. <laughs> Where's that coming from? Um, yeah, we're gonna want Dean Kane cast as the mentor, and we're also gonna want Kevin Sorbo in this movie, obviously. Um, um, Steve Baldwin too, maybe. Hold on, hold, hold on a moment. Last I checked, 
I still have a director role in this movie. That's what it said on the title page. Dean Cain doesn't fit the role of the mentor at all. I was I was thinking more of a a Michael Cain type. That's nice. Okay, here's a, here's a, a brilliant idea. Why don't we bring on new actors? Uh, uh not popular enough. We want this to hit big, big. We want to fill theaters. Also, you you mentioned a word earlier. Um, what was it? Um, subplex, sub neck, subtext. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? Did you make that up? No. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's made up. It's literally a word in the dictionary. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Whatever that is, um, we don't do that here at all. So uh, if you can just go through and you know remove everything related to that word, we should be good. Okay. Oh man, it's a good one. It's a good one. I, I haven't heard that yet today. Um, you should hear the guys down the hall. They're just cracking at it. <laughs> Subtext. That's, that's pretty good. Oh, you're serious, aren't you? Lastly, I want you to make it so that everyone's life becomes perfect when they become a Christian. Oh, come on! That has to be a joke! about a guy and he's trying to navigate the music industry. Lost the pen again. <laughs> oh, nope, nope, stay there. Stay there. It's up there. I love how God just shows up when you're least expecting it and just boop! Idea! <clears throat> There's a cracked voice. It's literally a, bur a bird. It's a bird in the dictionary. Yeah, the, the subtext uh, Americanus. It's pretty, uh, pretty rare in North America, but North America is the only place it's been found. Yeah, subtext Americanus. It's a cute bird too. They say they bring luck. I don't believe in luck. Blessings only. Yeah, we're actually hoping to have like a, a real, like a real budget for this, so we can launch a real rocket. That doesn't sound very nice. We're hoping to have a real budget. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna cast Dean Kane as the, the role of the mentor, and um, we want Kevin Sorbo in it, obviously. Um, maybe Stephen Baldwin down the line, too? Maybe uh, the cast of Life Mark, because that seems to be a, a popular trend nowadays. I, I think it really, you know, really attract the younger generation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Justin, if you're watching this. Um, yeah, I, I know. Justin Sterner, he played in Life Mark. I'm sorry, it's a joke. It's a joke. That's a cut. Oh, I think <clears throat> I'm losing my voice here. <clears throat> That's a wrap on uh, every Christian movie ever. See y'all later. <laughs>